Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and today we're going to be talking about how if you want the best gaming experience, you might not actually want to run unlimited FPS and instead cap your FPS and use G Sync. G Sync is nothing new, it was introduced many years ago by Nvidia, and then AMD joined later with FreeSync. And what it does is it tries to mitigate tearing. Tearing sucks. It's basically when your FPS and your refresh rate don't match up and then you get some weird lines. It's just not fun. VSync also kind of does the same thing, but it's not that good standalone. But G-Sync really did a really good job. Now, if you know anything about G-Sync or done any research, there are different kind of tiers of G-Sync. So there's G-Sync compatible, which is what this monitor here is my Acer 390Hz 1080p monitor. It's pretty good, but there's also G-Sync Ultimate. Ultimate, it's gonna be better. But what G-Sync Ultimate means is that it has a dedicated G-Sync module in the actual display, and this actually allows for lower latency and a better G-Sync experience. Sadly, G-Sync Ultimate is only available from what I believe on NVIDIA GPUs. So if you are on an AMD GPU, sorry, you are going to miss out a little bit. In my opinion, although I don't currently have a G-Sync Ultimate monitor that I'm using for my daily, definitely get a G-Sync Ultimate monitor, especially if you have an NVIDIA GPU. Some really good ones are the ASUS 1440p 360 hertz. There are some 1440p 240 hertz as well. Some of the 1080p ones are recommended, but like don't really buy a 1080p monitor. They believe the 500 hertz is, but no one's really buying that one. I will leave affiliate links down below to some recommended G-Sync Ultimate monitors if you are interested and are able to support the channel. But I decided to try this out because I realized that in especially every game, because I have the world's fastest PC, I'm hitting super high FPS, but I'm not really getting any of the benefits. And I kept having people say, yo, use G-Sync, use G-Sync, it's going to perform really, really well. And I had, I'd used it before and I was like, eh, whatever, it's fine. You know, just by turning on G-Sync in the monitor's display. But then I realized there are some different ways to correctly set up G-Sync, and that changed it. So, using G-Sync, V-Sync, and a mix of Reflex, which is something I typically haven't recommended, it's performed well. Let me show you how to enable these settings real quick. Okay, here's how you want to properly enable G-Sync. So first of all, make sure G-Sync is actually enabled in the control panel. Then we just want to go low latency mode, set that to ultra. This is for if the game does not support reflex. And then also you want to download something like River Tuner or um, just do it in the game if you want to, whichever ones you prefer. Then just go to River Tuner and set an FPS cap. So I have a 390 hertz, so I'd select 385 and then enable it And here. And then scroll down, vertical sync, make sure that's on. You can also set power management mode to normal, same FPS, lower power draw. And then in a game like COD, wherever reflex is enabled, if you have reflex in the game, set to on plus boost. This will cap the FPS and it does the same thing as ultra. It does overwrite ultra. So whatever, if you have low latency mode set to on in the control panel, on plus boost will override that. For my AMD users, you can also follow the guide. Just enable VSync. Um, you can try out Radeon Anti-Lag. I've never had a good experience with it, but maybe if you enable um, G-Sync, go ahead. If not just cap your FPS to about 5 FPS lower and you'd be perfectly fine. Just make sure if you're on AMD that you're not using a G-Sync Ultimate panel because there are some compatibility issues locked down by NVIDIA. Thanks NVIDIA, you're great. What kind of games did I run though? So before we actually talk about any of the benchmarks, I think it's really important that I say all of these benchmarks are freshly ran. Paired them against a stock with an undervolt on my PC and then also with a max overclock. So I was running a 1300K stock versus 5.7 all core, 4.4 on the E cores, 4.9 on the ring with hyper threading disabled. So when you're seeing certain benchmark results, you might be like, oh, that score is low. That's why I ran the RTX 4090 compared to a stock 2805 megahertz with plus 1000 on the memory clock versus a 3045 megahertz, which is a big difference. And then a plus 1500 on the memory, max power limit. You do get to see the power differences as well. And then RAM was both at 7900 megahertz. So no difference there on the RAM. RAM does stay overclocked. RAM doesn't get very 
power. I think it might pull 10 watts max. Who cares about 10 watts versus 9 watts on RAM? And you might get 20% more FPS. All right, I'm looking over what games I ran real quick just so I can give you guys the most accurate information. The synthetics that we ran were Time Spy Extreme Benchmark. We got the scores and the power draw so you can compare the two. We also ran Cinebench R23 Single and Multi-Core. This is just a CPU benchmark. That's why I used it. We also ran Spider-Man Remastered. This is with Reflex On Plus Boost. And then we also ran the very high preset with ray tracing enabled. There was no DLSS frame generation on there. We don't care about fake frames here on this channel. I also ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is with the stock settings. I did disable DLSS. Once again, we don't want fake frames interrupting our benchmark results. We also ran Apex Legends in the firing range on plus boost once again. Same thing with Fortnite using a in-game replay. So I had to play this game actually to give you this benchmark video. So if that's enough, hit the like button down below, subscribe, and then Modern Warfare 2 with the built-in benchmark just so it's consistent, all low settings. All of the competitive battle royales are with all low settings, obviously. I forgot to mention, all benchmarks were done in 1440p on my Asus XG27AQM, which is a 1440p 270Hz monitor. It is FreeSync. It is not actually G-Sync Ultimate. Yeah. Now, let's get into the benchmarks. Before we get into any actual performance numbers, I think that's really important that we talk about power draw, most importantly. So, as you can see, when running a max OC, the GPU in TimeSpy Extreme is pulling about 115 more watts or about 27 percent more power draw so to really see a good performance piece we need to get about 27 percent more performance while the cpu is pulling about 60 more watts and about 33 percent more power so you might want to see on average for it to scale literally about 30 percent boost in fps that is just kind of what needs to be seen before we actually talk about benchmark results and starting off with the first synthetic here we do have time spy extreme so the undervolt did get a pretty good combined score of about 18,300 the max oc got right above 19,000 for about a 3.8 percent boost so yes both these numbers are really big but you might think oh 700 points that's a lot really about three percent um the graphics score is a is going to be where you're getting the biggest amount of improvement at about 3.99 percent so four percent basically um i mean we'll see as in in this video this doesn't matter if you're hitting your frame rate if you're already hitting your frame rate it doesn't really matter cpu you're getting about a 3.2 percent fps boost which is mostly coming just from those p cores so if you had something like a 1300k i you could overcome this and now we have cinebench what's really interesting with cinebench here is okay so first of all they're basically the exact same single core performance. Max OC slightly loses. That is because stock will, especially under lower loads, you will see a boost to about 5.8 gigahertz on one or two cores, while with the Max OC, it was running all 5.7. So that's kind of important. Multi core, though, Max OC obviously wins because instead of running 5.5, you're running 5.7. Just remember, this is with hyper threading off, so that this isn't like the highest cinebench score you can get on the 1300k getting about 2.8 percent boost in multi-core with the max oc all right next up we have spider-man remastered now this game is not hitting our fps cap we're hitting about you know 150 ish fps the lows are literally the exact same on this which really shows how much hardware is and how like okay we got what was it two three percent on the averages but the lows did the exact same i think that really shows power towards modern hardware and how good it can get and how overclocking just gets you a little bit it's not insane anymore with lower end hardware it is a lot different but when you and also this is with the ram ram tuning if i would have ran like 7000 megahertz ram this would have been 10 percent at least in my opinion so definitely keeping the ram speeds the same really does help but for this game, getting the same FPS with Undervolt, get a lot less power. So, yeah. Now with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So, as you can see, obviously the average FPS here 
is going to be a lot different. This is when we're finally getting to the, oh, you're hitting an FPS cap when you have V-Sync and G-Sync enabled. So you're getting about 26% higher average FPS. Once again, as a single player game, doesn't really matter. 268 versus 340 in a single player game is going to be the exact same. Look at the lows though, nine more FPS, 4.4%. And this is mostly just because the average FPS can be a lot higher. So like the lows in game will feel about the same. Now for the world's greatest BR Apex Legends, I would like to remind you guys that the max FPS cap of this game is 300 FPS. So with capping to 270, enabling reflex on plus boost, all that stuff that you need to do to properly set up G-Sync, it does cap the FPS to 250. The lows are surprisingly better here, gaining about 17-ish FPS, 9.6%, and the lows and 0.1%, point, uh, sorry, 8%. That's pretty big. So 9, 8%, like if you can get that pretty good, honestly, this is a game where you kind of want the 360 hertz kind of monitor, so you're always above that monitor cap so then you can run 300 fps in game get those high lows now fortnite this game once again shows kind of the oh yeah i kind of have to cap my fps uh 250 versus 550 that's a big difference that's uh what is that it's over double plus a little bit so yes this game honestly uncap unless you like if you have like a 360 hertz, 14, uh, 1440p or 1080p, if you have above 300 hertz, then you can do this. For me though, what I've done actually, because I've been playing Fortnite lately with my friends, hasn't been enjoyable. Don't play Fortnite. <laughs> um, I've just been uploading the quality, so like running higher textures, higher effects, makes the game look a little nicer, a little bit more competitive too. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. But Fortnite, definitely, you might want to, not even the max OC, just uncap and just run with tearing. And the last benchmark we have here is Modern Warfare 2. Now, once again, this is a game where you have that 250 FPS cap with reflex on plus boost. So you're getting about 30% more average FPS. That's expected. You're going to get higher. But about 15 and 12% in the 1% and 0.1% respectfully. In game, is it going to be this high? Probably not. Most uh, Warzone games, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna get as high FPS. Um, also, if you're running like a lower end PC on any of these games, not just COD, it's really important that you understand like, oh, I have this little FPS. I'm not hitting my monitor refresh rate. Let's see. Let's enable the G Sync so you get a little smoother performance, and it's just a lot more enjoyable. But now let's talk about, in my opinion use cases for each of these scenarios but there you have it as you can see i would really recommend g-sync for most people especially if you have something like a lower end pc and you can't always get that 270 fps target go ahead and enable g-sync enjoy a little bit smoother experience and if you can blow past those performances maybe if you're playing a game like valorant or something where you want the most up-to-date information go ahead and disable it run uncapped you will notice screen tearing but if you're competitive, you're going to be fine with that. You want that app. You want that performance and you want that instant information. Also, you get to, if you're blowing past that FPS, enjoy lower power draw. So especially when it's hot like this out in the summer, you don't have to worry that much about power draw and heating up your room. Honestly, if I had a monitor such as like a 500 hertz 1080p or a 1440p 360 hertz, if you want to buy me those, let me know. I definitely use it though because you're not always going to hit that fps in games this is my 390 hertz this will be my main monitor if you know you know this will be my main monitor from now on and it has as you might be able to see in the osd in the gaming tab it has FreeSync premium this is all right there you have it if you guys have enjoyed this video make sure that you hit that like button down below subscribe if you are new if you're interested in purchasing any of the monitors or a g-sync monitor and upgrading Affiliate links down below, support the channel, but I'll see you guys later. Peace.